So good evening, everyone. And uh, this is a, just a basic uh, talk on a fetal echocardiography as a cardiologist, as a pediatric cardiologist uh, perspective and what we can uh, do and when we need to do. Okay, a few basic views and uh, we, the uh, I am uh, you are always open for if you have any questions also we can I can uh, I'll be happy to take it. So, <clears throat> so what is fetal echocardiography? It is nothing but it is the examination of the fetal heart. Okay, normally when you examine a fetal heart, okay the the heartbeat you starts uh, in in utero. It's uh, when you it's in the fifth. Uh, uh, fifth week or sixth week of life, you see the heartbeat. But if you have to assess the intracardiac structures, uh, it is not uh, uh, possible to assess clearly or to some extent before the 16th week of life. Okay, the chambers, the formation. Though the formation of the heart happens within the within the first trimester, but a complete, uh, detailed or reasonable examination of the fetal heart is not going to happen before the 16 weeks of life. Okay. <clears throat> So why do you uh, need to do a fetal echo? The most important thing why you need to do a fetal echo is uh, you must, you all know that congenital heart disease is the commonest form of uh, uh, congenital disorder. Okay, So the prevalence of congenital heart disease we can say is about roughly about 10 per thousand live births. Uh, uh, yeah, 10 per thousand live births, which almost translates to 1%. Okay, So uh, the congenital most common congenital deformity is a congenital heart disease so definitely anybody everybody's uh, child um, uh, any parent would like to have a normal and healthy child to have a uh, normal child right so when we screen for all this congenital heart disease uh, uh, and all we have the other uh, screening tools also which are available uh, which are generally done in the first end of the first trimester okay but fetal echocardiography is a targeted scan of the heart so this targeted scan of the heart has to be a systematic evaluation it is not um, uh, you just say a few of this thing when you say the fetal echo that means you are really serious and you are looking at the heart okay and you are we are giving a definite uh, a full shot uh, method to rule out significant or major congenital uh, heart diseases in a in the fetus okay so and it's so that if you have to do if you have to utter the word fetal echocardiography it has to be a complete job and uh, definitely it has to be a complete systematic evaluation All right <clears throat> so uh, whenever who or whoever performs a fetal echocardiography so they should know what uh, there is something different that what we have is the adult circulation or normal postnatal circulation that is different from intra uh, um, intrafetal okay fetal uh, circulation is differently different okay so you should you once you, you know the cardiovascular anatomy you also have to know the fetal cardiovascular physiology you also have to know the cardiovascular development okay how the heart forms once you know that you can anticipate few defects so some of them are there in uh, in a combination so like uh, for example a tetralogy of fallow so why there is a tetralogy is a, like a, there are four combination one is the main reason for a development of tetralogy is the or anterior deviation of the coronal septum is what we say. So that would lead to a formation of a large VSD and outflow tract RVOT. And this in turn would give rise to the right ventricular uh, hypertrophy uh, <clears throat> per se. So what is the basis, underlying basis or how the development that also will actually help us in understanding the uh, uh, lesion okay so you need to know about embryology or the cardiovascular development and you also have to know you also have to have obstetric uh, scanning so suppose it's a diaphragmatic hernia or movements those all the uh, um, levocardia dextrocardia those also what is uh, in uh, situs and all that you also have to have a rough knowledge whenever you are performing a fetal echocardiography so who all can do it is it a cardiologist who can do it no, it's not always you can it can be a fetal echo can be done by a cardiologist a radiologist or even an obstetrician a trained obstetrician they do their tfas scans right so they also can uh, definitely uh, have um, if they have a reasonable expertise and they understand all these um, uh, features, definitely they also can do a fetal echocardiography. Okay. 
so so what is the window time window right time okay when we should do as you know you have the mtp laws and all that going right so the ideal time or ideal window would be between 16 to 20 weeks before 16 weeks as i already told you it's difficult uh, to ascertain the, this thing but there are uh, centers where at least from trans abdominal is very difficult but few centers very early fetal echocardiography they are doing through trans vaginal route Whereas the routine, uh, when we have a targeted, when we say fatal echocardiography, it's ideally at 16 to 20 weeks, before the 20 weeks, so that you know if there is a major congenital uh, cardiac anomaly, you can give a appropriate this thing. 21 to 24 weeks, yeah, yeah it is uh, definitely yeah not uh, suggestible, but yeah, sometimes you can uh, identify some of the things which you have missed between the 16 to 20 weeks. And greater than 24 weeks, uh, and as they reach the term, yeah, it is not good. And uh, one thing is, yeah, it might just help us where the patient can uh, deliver if it is a, there is a significant uh, uh, underlying congenital heart disease uh, so that the outcome of the baby is better. But in terms of uh, prognostication and all, we might not be able to help the family much. So ideal time for fetal echocardiography, 16 to 20 weeks. So, what would be the indications? Okay, so when they come they are for a fetal scan, so uh, you can divide them into maternal, fetal, and familial. Okay, so specific indications, yeah, though it is not an equilateral this thing, but most of the time you want all the children to be screened, right? So, when there's an abnormal TFA scan and all that, okay, fetal indications. Maternal, if the mother is on some drugs, mother is on pre gestation, not uh, pre gestation, before she was pregnant, she was diabetic and all. And familial, yeah, there are some uh, inherited uh, uh, congenital heart uh, disorders. Okay, there was a history of hypoplastic left heart syndrome in the previous child. Okay, uh, the incidence or recurrence risk can be as high as uh, eight to ten percent in hypoplastic left hearts, and or else uh, uh, smaller uh, the remaining other congenital heart diseases. The incidence is definitely less than five percent. Okay, but uh, that also has to be kept in in mind. Okay, so indications when we say, uh, uh, if you go in individually, as if you say fetal indications, like if the uh, TFA scan shows any extra cardiac anomalies, if there is any suspicion of a bacterial, okay, uh, there is an association or suspicion of a trisomy Down syndrome, okay, your uh, NT scan was abnormal, okay, all that you can, uh, uh, you might have to look for. Or there is the evidence of high drops, there is complete uh, fluid filled in the abdomen and uh, lung cavity, okay, that's when you're Suspecting non-immune hype drops, you tend to do a fetal echo. Even there is a irregular heart rates. It could be a regular, uh, regular tachycardia, okay, uh, like something called as a SVT we call as, or it could be a very low heart rate, or like it could be congenital complete heart block. That time also when the obstetrician says the heart rate is low or too high, you need you tend to do a uh, heart scan. Why? Basically, yeah, the indirectly these arrhythmias can occur. Uh, tachy arrhythmias can occur for a specific uh, uh, problems, whereas uh, uh, Brady arrhythmias, yeah, though rare, uh, but it's uh, seen in a congenital uh, correct transposition of arteries if it is a uh, structural anomaly. Or else, uh, Brady arrhythmia can also be part of a uh, antenatal SLE. Mother has a SLE, so they can have a congenital complete heart block. Also, the other indication would be when an obstetrician is uh, doing a scan of the heart, TIFA scan, they see an abnormal four-chamber view or if there is an abnormal uh, cardiac axis, these um, uh, patients uh, tend to uh, refer for this thing. IVF and ICSI, it's always a debate, but there's no this uh, definite data doesn't uh, there is no definite data which says that there is an increased incidence of uh, uh, congenital fetal congenital anomalies with uh, IVF patients. So that is not a definite indication. Whereas maternal indications, yeah, mother had a congenital heart disease or mother has a teratogen exposure exposure to something which can cause congenital heart disease. Mother has a pre-gestational diabetes mellitus or a phenylketonuria. Any autoimmune disease in the mother, like what I said already, like Jogren syndrome or SLE, that can uh, that can cause a uh, fetal cardiac uh, abnormality or any intrauterine torch infections in the mother, okay, uh, rubella and other torch infections can also cause a, uh, problems in the fetal heart. Familial, yeah, as I already told you, previous uh, child with congenital heart disease, father has a congenital heart disease, then there are uh, autosomal inherited uh, syndromes okay and una and di george okay those all can be cause of this thing then so 
when you have to do a fetal echocardiography, you must you are you must be very sure that you have the adequate equipment for doing the fetal heart. Okay, fetal heart scan. So we what we uh, normally recommend is at least they must have a high frequency probe for resolution, and uh, it has to be minimum four megahertz. And uh, we need to have all this low compression, little or no uh, uh, persistence of the uh, equipment okay there you need to have a detailed uh, good uh, <clears throat> decent equipment before you try to attempt a fetal scan okay you also uh, need these are all the how uh, uh, they are actually when you are doing scans you can get into these things your harmonic imaging okay maintaining a frame rate how to get a good image okay because the maternal uh, sometimes you might get a very good images if the mother is uh, uh, not not uh, is a lean patient okay if the uh, uh, patient is a little obese and is too much abdominal fat then you might not get the adequate images okay so uh, so in such cases you have to try to maintain good frame rates try to zoom in okay and uh, always try to have a real time assessment okay not don't look at a still frame and think oh there is an asd or there is a vsd or not like that always look at real time uh, this thing and try to assess okay so the components of a fetal cardiac screening what is it is is basically you have to uh, when you are starting the scan you have to orient yourself and orient to the baby okay which is left which is right unlike what when you are doing a re regular uh, um, uh, echocardiogram you know where is which is where is the patient's left and right but in utero inside the fetus for you have to get yourself oriented to the fetal position which is left and which is right then also you need to look at the visceral situs okay whether it uh, whether it is situs solitus or uh, situs inverses cardiac size and what is the axis okay that and all i'll uh, i'll let you know i'll show you a few pictures then the four chamber look at the four chamber view then sweeping at and looking at the outflow tracts okay whether there are great arteries crossing or not then look at the tree vessel view okay and the next would be basic rhythm and function okay these are the basic important things when we look at uh, uh, when we are assessing a fetal echocardiogram <clears throat>